Hi, my name is Peach. Let me not waste your time. Today, I'll be showing you how to create this half tone effect in DaVinci Resolve using Fusion. The method for making this effect was created by Smartiba Graphics in After Effects, and I just translated it over to DaVinci Resolve. So if you want to go watch this video, I'll link it down below. All right, let's get started. All right, to start off, I have my clip right here, and what I like to do is compound clip it so I have a nice timeline to start off with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click the clip, and then I'm going to go up to New Compound Clip. I have it bind to C, but you have to change it in your key binds if you want to do that. You just hit New Compound Clip, just like that. Name it to whatever you want. That is fine. And then we can go inside of Fusion by clicking this button over here. If you don't know how to use Fusion, I suggest watching this video by Casey Ferris that goes over the basics on how to use Fusion. Then you can come back and watch this video and it'll probably make a little bit more sense on how to use Fusion in general. All right, the way that we're going to start how to do this is we're going to make the dot grid first and then we're going to add the other effects to make the halftone effect. So first thing we need to add is the S ellipse node. So hit shift space and then we type S ellipse. We can hit shift and enter and it'll keep our select tool menu up and then we can add another node. So we're going to hit S render, shift enter and that's going to add another our node directly to it and so we're going to add a transform node so type in transform like that and with the xf that's the one we want shift enter and we need to add a crop node so in the crop shift enter and then we could cancel out of this menu over here and we also need to add a background node so we'll grab a background node from our toolbar up here drag it, drag it under our crop and then what we're going to do is connect the crop to the square of the background node just like that and it'll create a merge node just like this and here we're going to create our dot grid so first thing we need to do is go to the s render and then we're going to go up to the inspector we're going to uncheck the auto resolution and then go up to the width i'm going to type in 1080 or whatever square comp resolution is so we can hit two on our on the s render you can see we can have our composition at a square resolution it could be lower you'll have a little bit better playback but for now i'm just going to use 1080 by 1080 and then we're going to go to our transform node to look at it and then go up to the transform node we're going to hit edges and go down to mirror that's going to give our mirrored effect so we're going to have so many dots on our screen and let's go over to our crop and make sure it's going to be at 19 20 by 1080 and then click this keep centered button my hand's already on but keep it centered and so it'll have everything over here and now if we zoom out on our transform node over here you can see all of our dots start to appear on our screen just like this it has a big big uh dot grid over here and we can just put it to a value oh, i would say something around there is fine if you want to have a little bit more control over the size if you hold down control on your keyboard and then start putting it down you can see we have we go into values that are much smaller than what we originally had and so let's say around there is fine 0 0.01 and then let's go up to our s ellipse and we actually need to change the color of it so let's go s ellipse go to style go to the drop down menu and strike drag it all the way down so we see the black dots let's view our merge node you can see that that background is actually also black so we need to go to the background node and change the color to white just like this and now we have our dots for our halftone effect so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a very blur so hit shift enter type in very blur and then we're going to add that tool to our flow and we're going to take the merge one to the yellow input of the very blur and we're going to connect our media into the green input of the very blur over here and then we can view our very blur and let's change some settings on there the settings on our very blur is going to be a blur size of 1.5 we're going to change this method to focus and then we're also going to change the blur channel to luma just like that and I actually need to put a invert color node on this screen input so we're going to hit shift space invert color and bring this down over here this one invert color and then we can add it to our graph just like this and we actually hit shift and, and over the top of the line it'll add it to our node sheet just like this and you can see now that our images start starting to pop out of our screen but we just need to give it a little bit more contrast so we can actually see the image and the way that we're going to do that is through the color curves option so we're going to shift space type in color curves the first one should be fine and then let's add this to very blur to our color curves just like this and we kind of need to change our graph of our color curves a little bit for it to work correctly so we're going to zoom out on our little graph over here so hit control and then zoom out just like that with the scroll wheel and then we need to add points or on both sides of these two keyframes that are here so add a keyframe there let's type in the value negative 0.1 and then hit enter and then you type the value of zero and so now it's going to create that straight line that's going for uh, it's over here and let's do the same thing at the top so we're going to hit under the keyframe let's do 1.1 and enter and then we put that value to one and now we have our graph ready so we zoom back in just like this and now we can select our keyframe at the bottom and we're going to move this over to the right just like this and now you can see our image starting to pop up out of our screen and you can keep it here at this point or you can go a little bit more i like to put it at 0.9 and then adjust my values over here more so i can get a little bit more of a range so if i put a brightness contrast node so I've been brightness contrast and let's add this to be right before the invert color node and we can raise the lift we can see we can get a little bit more values out if we do want that effect and it don't have enough uh space over here but we can actually change around and play around with the half a little bit more and so let's go to the transform we can bring this size down but it actually get the whole image darker and so 
So another way to combat that is to go up to the S ellipse, go up to the controls, and then we're gonna compare the height and the width together. So let's double click the height value, and then we're gonna hit equal sign, and it's gonna make an expression. And so we can link this expression by hitting the plus sign and putting it to the width, and then bringing down this size of our little dot. And you can see it starts brightening the image. And so we can just play around with the size or the width over here with our size. And we also just change our angle a little bit to just have our nice halftone effect that we want just like this. And let's bring it down even, even more. So I'm like, uh, this could be fine. And then we can bring down the size to bring it down even more. And so we can see just a little bit more, something like that. And uh, yeah, I think something like that will do. Depending on each scene, you might have to change on how it looks. But for the most part, this is how it is. In order to get rid of these lines on the edge, we're actually gonna add a transform node at the end. Let's put this button over here on our toolbar as another transform node. And then we can zoom in on our value just like that. And now we have our effect and we could just merge it on top of our media out, or we could merge it to our media out just like this. And now we have our effect going out just like this. All right, let me explain how this works. Here we have our dot grid, our, our dot, we zoomed it out. So we have our mirrored edges on this and we have our grid just like this. Then we're gonna plug it into our variable with our as the main input. So, we're, so the way that the variable works is that it has the footage on the yellow input and then the blur map on the green input. And so depending on whatever values are here, the, the lumen channel of our image right here, it will give it a value on how to blur it. So for example, if say this color is closer to black, it'll blur it less than compared to one that is considered white over here, just like that. And so that is how it tells the, the image how to give that half tone effect that we want. And then the way we need to bring this these colors down, because a bunch of it's really white right now, but we can bring these colors down and crush these values in order to get an image that you never know pretty well, just like this. And if you zoom in on the screen, you can see that these uh, dots are kind of blurring together at certain points in order to create that shape so we can recognize in those cases like this. And yeah, that's pretty much how it works. If you're interested in learning about other effects like this distort warp slash warp bubble effect, click this video right here. Otherwise, subscribe and have a good day.